When installing Add-in Express solutions, you have three deployment options. You have Windows Installer, click once and click twice. Now with Windows Installer, you have the options of per user or per machine installations. Everything is MSI based. You can't install them from the web and you must uninstall the current installation before you install any updated version of your add-in. With Click Once, you have the advantage of not requiring administrative access to the system. They're per user only. You can install from the web and the updates uninstall automatically as well as then install the new version. Click Twice is added an express unique twist on both Click Once and MSI based installations. Click Twice is, is an MSI based installation package and updates uninstall old versions automatically as well as install the new version. In this video, we'll complete the end-to-end -end demo by building a Click Twice deployment package that includes a customized user interface, implements a custom action, and allows the user to select which applications to support. Okay, so let's get started. What I have here is my tasks end to end, the solution we've been building in the previous four parts. And the very first thing we need to do to create a setup project is we'll just right click on the project and say create setup project. And this will open up the new setup project wizard and I'm going to select the defaults all the way through. Notice by default we have Visual Studio installer supported. If I had install shield installed on my system it would also be lit up and available for me to select but I don't so I won't we're gonna choose Visual Studio installer leave the title the description the product name and company as the default names and I'll click next here too I can choose localization I'm gonna keep it as its default the file name and the output directory which will go all the way uh, underneath my file or my uh, project structure and create a my task into end setup and then 1.0.0 which is the version number of my DLL and I'll say finish. When done, Visual Studio then adds the project to my solution, as we see here, as well as creates the solution. I mean, it creates the project and adds it to my solution. Uh, one of the first things we need to do, because I'm using Access, is I will need to take this Access file, and in my build action, I want to set this as content. And then in my my task end in setup, we'll say we'll right click and we'll do add, and I'm going to say project output, and I want to go ahead and, and include my content files as well. This doing this will make sure that the file is in along with all my DLL files and everything, and is accessible uh, where they expect it to be, which is in the same folder as they are. Now what I want to do is open up the ADX loader. Dot dll dot manifest file and I'll right click and say open and we'll see in here the XML for our application you'll see our assembly identity you know my tasks end to end that's the add-in name but what I really want to focus on is this supported apps line which we see that the value is set to 15 and what this number means is it's it's equal to the numeric value of all the supported applications that we've specified in the add-in module. So if I open this up in design view and if we look at its properties coming down here to supported apps we see that we have Excel, Word, Outlook, and PowerPoint. So how is it that supported apps equals 15? Well let's look at the code. We'll dig in this real quickly and if we look at initialize component and actually I'll just search for this dot supported apps and we'll see in this line that it's equal to you know, several things here. We have add an express.mso.adx office host app, OHA Excel, OHA Word, Outlook, and PowerPoint. So let's look at these. I'm going to go to the definition, just right click on this ADX office app host and we'll go to the definition and we see here a set of constants values here where Excel equals 1, Word is 2, Outlook is 4, and PowerPoint is 8. So if we add up all four of these values we will get 15. And now what I could also do is I could take a combination of those and if I just wanted to support Excel I could say 1 right here um, or two for Word, uh, four for Outlook, and eight for PowerPoint. But it's really any combination of those constants, you can add those up 
and, and put them in here, which is what we'll get to later with our custom with our custom action. Now with this knowledge in hand, let's go back to our my task end to end solution and we'll see up here in the solution explorer we have various buttons on this toolbar and what I want to do is the I want to click on the user interface editor which will open up the different screens or dialog screens that will make up our install and I want to go to start and I'm going to right click and say add dialog and I want radio buttons 4 next I want to move this up by right clicking it and say move up I want it to display immediately after the welcome dialog. Now over here in the properties, I want to set the banner text to say select supported office applications. And we'll just make these the same, select off or close to the same, select office apps. And then here I will say, what I want to do instead is make a combination. I want Outlook to always be chosen so I will do Excel Word and PowerPoint options plus Outlook for each and then the fourth option will be all applications so here I'm just gonna say Excel and Outlook because Excel is one and Outlook is four that will make five so the value here will be five and then for Word and Outlook we know that Word is two Outlook is four so this will be six We'll do PowerPoint and Outlook. PowerPoint is eight. Word is four. So as I covered earlier, that makes 12. And here we'll make this one be all supported office applications. I'll scroll down and uh, we'll just do all values, sum them all up. One, two, four, and eight, which will make 15. And I want this button property value to be selected app and I'll do the default value as five because at a minimum I just I want the this first option selected when the display or the dialogue displays so I'll go ahead and click Save okay now what we're do we're ready to do is to create another project um, if we're looking here I don't know if I explained that well enough but this uh, selected app what we're gonna be able to do is create a custom action for this installation and I'm going to be able to grab the value of selected app, which would change depending on you know if they chose Word and Outlook, Excel and Outlook, or what have you. So it's going to be 5, 6, 12, or 15. But I can select that value in code via something known as a custom action. So I'm going to right-click on the solution, and I will say Add, New Project. And we are going to add a new class library, and we will call this target apps custom action say okay and we can delete this class onecs file we're not going to need it and what we want to want to do is to right click on the custom action project say add new item and we want to grab an installer class oh, we just passed it installer class I'm going to name this class target app installer we'll say add and once it opens up it's going to open up in design view but I want to view code and we are going to add some code but instead of just typing it out I'm going to grab it here I have have it saved right there I'm going to right click and paste and whoops I didn't grab the P. But what I have is just an overrided method called install that it's going to grab from the installation's parameters. I'm going to grab the target app, the target directory, and I'm going to make a path out of that path plus the ADX loader manifest file. And if you remember, right here is that manifest file. So once it's there, what I'm trying to do is get to this chunk of XML, and I want to grab the value here and write to it which is what we'll do um, right here grabbing the XML document we'll load the document into a node and we're gonna grab this configuration assembly identity supported apps which again is right here so assembly identity configuration and then supported apps is right here whoops go back we'll grab that value here and then we're going to change it 
to target app, which if you look up here at target app, we're, we're going to grab that from the context parameters of the application. And then we'll save it and, and move on. Now this will make a bit, bit more sense in just a second, but first we need to add our using system.xml. That should make the code happy again. All right, very good. So let me come over here. We'll build this guy. Build succeeded. That's great. Collapse all these. Now let's tie the code from this target app installer back to what's going on in the setup program. And the way we'll do that is to add a reference using the project output of the target app's custom action. We'll use the primary output and say, okay. And with the reference to this assembly, what I can do now is go to the custom actions editor and add a new custom action and I'll go to the application folder and I'll choose the primary output from target apps custom action and click OK. And I want this custom action to occur prior to the ADX registrator EXE. So I'll right click and choose move up and then I'll take the properties. We'll make them a little bit bigger just so we can read them. And then what we'll do for the custom action data property, we're going to set this to target app equals selected app. I need to put a bracket around that. And then we'll set target directory equal to, and in quotes, we'll do target dir just like that. And you want to make sure you have your quotes correct right here. There's only quotes around the target. And I better spell that correctly. Good thing I checked. Target, D-I-R, and then the brackets and the backslash. So now looking at this, it'll make more sense if we go back to our user interface. And remember in our radio buttons down here, we have this button property of selected app. And that will be the value selected among the different buttons, whichever radio button they've selected, the value can be captured via this custom or via this selected app value. So if we go back and we're looking at our custom action, we see right here, we'll set target app, which will be a parameter inside of the wizard that we can capture. So selected app will be equal to target app and then target directory, we're just grabbing the, the directory, the install directory. But then if we look at our code here in the target app installer, we'll go back and we'll see that we're grabbing the target app, that value, uh, we're grabbing the directory. And then over here in this XML node, we get the supported apps node and we grab that value and then we change it using the value from target app right there. And, uh, and if we look again at the manifest right here, we'll see that the supported apps node is right there inside of the manifest right there. So again, you know, grabbing it from configuration, assembly identity, supported apps. So now let's go ahead and build the setup program. And what I'll do is right click and set build. And as we watch it building here, there's two steps in all of this. The first is to set up the MSI project or set it up and configure it and then build it. And then once you have that, then we can move on to the publishing part, which creates the click one or excuse me, the click twice portion of the setup package. And now that we have this build has succeeded, what we can now do is go to our project, back up to my task end to end project, and I will do publish ADX project, which will bring up the publish dialog box. We have two choices, the click once deployment and the MSI based web deployment, also known as click twice. Uh, we'll skip the click once deployment and move over here to MSI based web deployment. And the first thing it wants is the location of our installer file. So I'll click over here and we'll move to my task end to end setup 1.0.0 debug which is my location for my MSI file, and I'll click open. 
want to do that, we'll see that the product name, the product code, author, language, and version all populate in the MSI information portion of the dialog. Also, too, it sets up a location for the pu publishing location uh, set to the root folder plus the MSI publish folder. Now, for my installation URL, I want to set this to be a location on my system, local host, and then I have a folder in my root directory for my inet pub folder or, or my or my web server to e to e for end to end or end to end demo and then i can set an icon file if i like and i will i want to move over here to my visual studio image library i'll i'll do something like actions the ico format win vista and yeah we'll do this auto run icon say open and then also too we need a a certificate file. I've already already have one for my demos here. E to E cert.pfx. I'll open that. I could also have created a new one. I can set a password. And then two, we have preferences for the installation. We can do quiet mode during installation, which means while it installs, there's no dialog box that would show up to display. It would just go ahead and install. Uh, the default is for quiet mode during uninstall. And then we can also show the downloader folder. I'm going to leave these all as their default values. Next, we have prerequisites, which I could choose to create setup programs for them and choose whatever I want, like .NET 4.0 or SQL Server Express, uh, if I had it and needed it, but I don't. And I'm just gonna go ahead and assume the user has the necessary .NET framework installed and leave this unchecked and say, okay. Then w once I'm satisfied that everything is as I want it, I can just click Publish. And Visual Studio successfully creates my click twice deployment and it's going to reside right here in this MSI publish folder in the root of my uh, projects directory. And I, I could go ahead and test the installation if I wanted to just right here doing install and then uninstall. I'm going to just move on and we're going to deploy this to my web server. Okay, let's go to our folder here in, in demo and then here is the MSI publish folder and we see uh, our files in here and we have a manifest file basically we'll open it here just to review quickly we we'll see uh, you know the installation URL the product code the files you know and then show the the options that I have so I want to show the install UI I don't want to show the uninstall UI and I want to show the downloader window etc so it looks correct and then in here if we move in we'll see uh, the MSI file and the my task end to end uh, click twice installer and what I want to do is I want to grab everything and then say copy and then I'm going to move to my root folder of my web server and we'll go into the E to E folder and I'll just say paste and then we'll just go to that folder which will be localhost e to e and I'll move into the 1033 directory and then I will click the my tasks into end.exe file and it's gonna go ahead and try to download and I'll say keep and then I'll open it and say run and now all that's left to do is to walk through the wizard install the application according to whichever office applications you want to select and then it's ready to go and is usable by the user on their targeted system. So in this video I've shown you how to create a click twice setup package and then also how to further customize the MSI portion of the click twice package to utilize a custom dialog that allows you to select which office applications to support. I want to give a big thanks to our very own Peter van der Westhusen uh, for his great article that's on our blog that covers this same topic. This video, in essence, is uh, just a video of what he's, he's done and I've expanded a little bit to incorporate it into uh, the end-to-end -end demo, but really this is a, a large, largely influenced by his work. So that's the end of this video and this end-to-end -end demo. I hope it was useful to you. And as always, if you have any questions, just leave comments on the blogs or in the forums and we'll be happy to help you out. So good luck out there.